Cool, so I am going to be working with the symmetry tool to do something like this. I'm gonna set a 30 minute timer to try and uh, make this kind of a speed painting, which is nice. Uh, I always thought speed painting was just sort of a gimmick, like, okay, cool, you can paint fast, but I don't know, it seemed like a, a parlor trick more than a useful thing, but it was pointed out to me that it's this great way to kind of let neuroticism go and just kind of be done with something just win or lose good or bad it's over in 30 minutes and I think that's actually really valuable so if uh, if you're not into speed painting maybe uh, give it a second second look okay a few things I have set up on my document here that I think um, are worth kind of going over First of all, is it's just a gray background. I'm going to be painting gray onto very dark gray, maybe a little bit of a white highlighting at the end. But I've added a, a few little texture layers. First of all, is this charcoal paper texture. Uh, you can get these on any kind of stock photo website. And I have that set to soft light. This will give it a nice like textured look. It, it simulates a charcoal paper drawing, which I really love. And I've also added a color lookup, um, which is a lot like just adding an Instagram filter. It just gives this uh, cast to everything. It's sort of like a gradient map. So instead of being just perfectly black and white, it kind of just uh, flavors things a bit and is cool. So that's what I've got. Okay, 30 minutes. Boom. Um, and symmetry tool. Okay, I'm just going to do a vertical symmetry, just dividing the canvas left and right. Another thing I just learned today is that you can make the blue line disappear. I've somehow never noticed hide symmetry. So that's really nice because we don't have to see that and we can just paint. Just let the stuff happen without the blue line. Uh, I'm using a very standard round brush um, and I'll be kind of going from super soft to maybe a little bit harder um, not sure how many of you are aware of this but you can actually adjust brush hardness with a keyboard shortcut just uh, shift and bracket but um, right the timer is running so let's let's make it a monster alien type dude and here we go. Um, symmetry tool is really effective for this. This is one of my first, maybe my actual first attempt at uh, rendering using this. I use it for design quite a bit. It's nice with things that have bilateral symmetry like a spaceship. You, you kind of only have to design one half one you know wing in the other half just sort of happens and it it looks nice it like looks correct when things that are supposed to match perfectly do um that's just kind of a a thing that like looks right to your viewer if you can get that working for you and the same is true with faces. Uh, we sort of expect some symmetry. Now, um, with a monster like I'm doing today, that actually might work against us because asymmetry can be sort of upsetting, um, especially if we're expecting to see it. Um, symmetry can kind of like make this hideous face look a little more pleasant than I might want it to. So it's interesting what symmetry does psychologically, uh, you know, good and bad. But I'm messing with shapes here. Um, my uh, Concept Art Academy artists will definitely recognize a few core shape principles that I'm going to lean on really heavily for this. Um, but this is a lot of just exploration and kind of um, 
reaching until something starts feeling like it's it's like clicking and then I'm gonna go with it I did that practice run so I have an approximate idea of like the vibe I'm going for definitely some nasty abstraction on human anatomy um, which I think a lot of really great monsters are the ones that sort of make us uh, you know, f they feel human in a weird, upsetting way. Um, so let's let's use that. Let's make our viewer kind of uncomfortable. Um, but it's it's also it's this fun, especially when it's uh, symmetrical like this. It's sort of a Rorschach test. It's just adding lights and darks until something starts to seem like a face or you know give you a certain certain vibe um, it's really fun and just weird how how this stuff works it's like having this uh, this face materialize out of the darkness uh, but I feel like I'm getting somewhere kind of like pinched nose and mouth area definitely want the eyes to be kind of sunken back, uh, sort of hidden in shadow, and then this big, weird, lumpy, alien forehead. Um, and of course, symmetry just makes all of this seem like it's, um, I don't know, like it, it just gives it more credibility and plausibility. These things feel like they belong somewhere. If I just made these marks on one half of the page, I don't think they would look, you know, as complete, as um, as believable, and you know, you it wouldn't be as easy to accept this as a face coming into existence. But because of that symmetry, it really works. Um, I am uh, monologuing though. I anybody have a question or comment on what I've done before? Has anybody here tried painting like this with the symmetry tool? Um, feel free to jump in, guys. You're not going to like interrupt me or uh, or anything. So uh, open floor. I'll I'll shut up for a, a minute or two. definitely think I'm going to want to make these teeth less symmetrical. Um, human teeth are another uh, that's like low-hanging fruit for just upsetting your audience when you're trying to paint something that's like weird and um, kind of uh, unsettling as I think we are certainly doing here is having teeth that are really recognizable and also kind of messed up um, that always kind of rings one of those weird uh, ick factor bells with your viewer so um, and these look like a dental x-ray that's pretty that's a fun happy accident okay coming along nicely um, just with airbrushing and shape design stuff I think we're, we're already off to a pretty decent start um, I'm gonna start trying to carve out some really sharp value edges I always love how much realism and dimension that seems to add when we can have really soft airbrushy edges but also hard cuts right like uh, sharp shifts from light to dark I love that. Let's kind of finish this guy out. I guess kind of imply a little more space filling. Yikes. Cool. Creepy. All those things. Maybe like give me a really massive head. See how I'm doing on time. Nice. 
only nine minutes. Um, that's the beauty of a really efficient uh, tool like Symmetry is just, this is coming together pretty amazingly quickly, uh, which is gonna leave me time for some fun detailing. Um, I'm not really keeping an eye on the chats. So I certainly hope that voice stuff is working. I am uh, still kind of learning with Discord, so apologies if I like, locked you guys out of being able to communicate. Uh, but if nothing else, I think this will be a cool... I, I'm recording this, so I'll just post it later if, if somehow um, that was malfunctioning. Or not malfunctioning, but set up improperly. Cool. Creepy and horrifying. All those things we we want these to be. Not sure what I think about these radiating. Yeah, I'm not gonna lean on that quite so hard. It is kind of cool though. Okay. Now, a lot of this is just sort of soft and vague, but I'm gonna try and start adding some finer detail where I want attention to be. Uh, eyes and teeth, I think, are going to be at the top of my list. So, shrinking my brush a little, I'm, I'm getting a little more into like needling in detail mode rather than just trying to define main shapes. I actually want some of this stuff to, to really start feeling like believable. Um, we're really getting into that fine detail. So, really sharp definitions here where the teeth come together. What I'm actually going to do, certainly before I'm done, is, is turn symmetry off because there are some places where I, I want this to be deliberately asymmetrical. May even liquefy a bit to just make some of these things different. Like, I want to like embrace the ugliness a bit and a very symmetrical face. Uh, I think, isn't that what they say is like on a person? That's how we can sort of scientifically quantify a beautiful face is with points of symmetry. Um, find that kind of interesting. Uh, can I have a question? Yeah, uh, please. Does this, does this work for humans too? Or is it a human face asymmetrical? Yes. Um, I actually, I did that this morning for a freelance client. Um, it does. It's, it's a little easier when it's a monster because it doesn't have to, um, you know, look recognizable. It's less forgiving with a human face because you recognize every little bit of weirdness, but it was actually more successful than I thought it would be. And it, it actually helped me get a project done way faster than I was expecting. Um, at least to get the base tones in place, kind of like up the steps I've done to this point. Um, I then um, turned symmetry off and started doing detail steps um, without symmetry, like adding highlights and, um, you know, really detailing. But yeah, yeah, this, it worked quite beautifully, actually. Um, and quite a time saver. Good question. But you can't show it because NDA, right? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I cannot. Um, but it's fine. yeah, I, maybe um, that that would make a good good live demo because uh, it it did it didn't even take an hour I don't think to uh, at least get the initial steps in place. Okay, 
cool. Yeah, thanks. Oh yeah, thanks. Thanks for chiming in. All right. Oh, nice. I like that. Kind of like slants his upper jaw backwards, so it's got this like shark-like face going on. We can do something a little more interesting with his cheekbones. All right, approaching the halfway mark. Let's do some hard cuts here to really show these like uh, double chin kind of uh, wrinkles happening. Don't want to get too bright with those though. Maybe I'll kind of make his jawline like disappear into this, um, you know, big blubbery neck. Oh man, I like that a lot. Cool. Okay. Maybe I'll, um, whoops. I don't know what I just did. Hope it wasn't important though. Let's uh let's erase away a bit of line work. Oh, um one of these lesser known Photoshop tools is this little camera icon, the snapshot tool. Just so that you know, if you're ever about to try something risky, you can set a snapshot and like go back in time in your timeline to uh to wherever you set that. So it's kind of like a little safety net you can put out for yourself. Uh which is always nice. Anything that makes you unafraid to try a risky thing, I always think that's uh, very useful. So all of this softness, like airbrushy um, softness, it's, it's kind of like we need some fine detail. We need some things happening in here that look like needle sharp. Otherwise it, it kind of looks unbalanced. So little bits of line work. Um, I think I'm going to try to do some really fine detail in the actual eyes themselves. But um, yeah, wrinkles, little places where ambient occlusion would happen like uh, where like so like where the palms of my hands are mashed together like there is actually a dark line of value visible there um, little things like that often end up being the very darkest or among the darkest values in your painting um, that's kind of cool so these little linear elements kind of help us make it look more realistic. They, they add extra design elements that we might not have really thought of. And they just, um, they make that rendering feel sharper. Do I like these though? Let's try something else. little random like holes and nostril type things um, can look kind of cool and alien okay Um, it's been a single color this whole time too. The only problem with applying this color lookup um, filter really is that it it keeps you from being able to pick a color because it would take on some of that cyan. Um, that's okay. We'll just stick with gray. I might do a tiny bit of highlighting after, but. Um, 
yeah let's let's just call that good to go for now okay let's let's give some life to this eye so one thing I love about rendering eyes is just doing this really minimalist if if the eye is set back in darkness you can kind of get away with just a little crescent moon shape on the bottom half and it can make this really believable eye kind of hanging back in shadow whoop too close I like that but maybe too human and that was so quick and easy maybe we can try something else eyes are always like outsized importance for for the impact they have on your design how um, just how they read and you know there's so many different eyes you can take from animal models like a cat type eye lizard um, I'm doing something sort of more fishy I guess here but adding in that extra pupil just to make this feel extra weird and otherworldly and uh, I think that that definitely helps to sell that let's get really detailed with some like baggy under eye wrinkles too I think this is a good place to really load it up with just busy visual activity to make this um, a real attention getter <laughs> getting this like evil old man vibe which I think uh, works for this quite nicely Just kind of adding and subtracting, kind of keeping things um, even, kind of keeping my value range sort of under control. I, I don't want um, things to get so zebra striped like dark light, dark light, which actually makes me realize I should probably kind of wash over this whole thing a bit with some tone to kind of unify things a bit and bring that value range a little bit you know more to a, a middle I always try to think of a whole value scale and really trying to work within a narrow range in that that spectrum Any questions, guys? Uh, no worries if not, but um, always cool when when you guys pipe in with any uh, comments or experience you might have. So, yeah, don't be shy. Let's see what our time is. Eight minutes. Okay. I'm going to use that remaining time to do like a another fun trick I'm going to fill the whole canvas with gray and set that to multiply so it's kind of like we're just adding this dark wash to the whole dude and then I'm just going to mask add a mask to this gray multiply layer and when we paint with black inside the mask it lets us add a bit of highlight so I'm gonna turn symmetry off and I am going to kind of make it look like we're shining a spotlight on half of this guy's face kind of like um, film noir mugshot energy here and I always love what that adds 
Oh, I'm just uh, flipping the canvas to kind of get a look at it from a different angle. Um, you can make that line really sharp, make it actually seem like there is a really distinct light and shadow line, but it's just super dramatic. Um, I'm gonna replace the shadow in a few areas where like the, the light would not be crossing over. Uh, if that makes sense, like if, if the plane of his, of his face is curving away, then this spotlight wouldn't be getting there. It's also a cool way to make something completely symmetrical by all, you know, intents and purposes look like asymmetrical, like something different, something um, unique. But isn't that cool what incredible mood and atmosphere that adds? It's suddenly like this guy is in an environment. Um, and we're, we're kind of, we're darkening things so much that might have been too intense. Knocked it back to 80. Um, cool, and with the remaining time, I'm going to do a little bit of like asymmetrical work. Let me mess these perfectly symmetric teeth up. Um, just gonna smudge around with a smudge brush a bit. Messing the teeth up. Uh, just to make him kind of unlikable and and creepy. This is one of those details that just uh, a bunch of really uh, messed up teeth kind of rings a bell with, with people. One of those great alarm bells we can ring to make people just hate this thing when we want it to. And uh, I'll probably just, yeah, take the last five minutes to, I've added a new layer and I'm finally painting with actual white. Uh, been really restraining the value range so far, but let's actually go full highlight here and add a few really intense bits of highlight. So a little specular gleam on his eyelid here. Maybe I can make these teeth down on the bottom jaw catching most of this light um, a little bit shiny too but that's about it a symmetry tool alien face um, any questions or comments guys open floor for the remainder a little more specular highlight um, just to add like some luster information kind of tell us how shiny the skin is there's there's a ton of information in that uh, the the shininess the like luster of a of an object we paint always a uh, weirdly powerful part of, of a painting like this. And it's just another way to sort of add that ickiness. Um, like look, when I turn this layer off, it just, uh, it adds so much. Pretty much just uh, noodling at this point. So I think we'll call that done. Um, cool, thanks for, uh, thanks for showing up to catch this one. And uh, thanks for the question. Um, I really love these speed paintings, just quick and it's it's done, win or lose in 30 minutes. So there's there's some value there. Hope you try one of these. Um, we've got some fun stuff coming up and sticking with just, this guy's gonna kick off like a really fun kind of creepy challenge period. We're gonna do like an October nightmare, just Halloween inspired, come up with terrifying things. So I'll have some announcement on that uh, coming up soon. But, um, yeah, more on that to show. I think it's going to be a fun one. And thanks for, uh, for coming around today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I will be around in the, uh, in the DPS server. If anybody has any questions on this, uh, definitely feel free to shout. But uh, let's do another one of these soon. Good to see you guys.